We are in our next, uh, in the series, this is number 12 of our series uh, in 1 Peter. And we left off at chapter 3, and we're now going into chapter 4. And uh, I, I think this is, um, I, you know, you, you, you kind of understand when you read these things why Peter wrote the letter. And this, this is probably, they're dealing with suffering. And so Peter wrote to them so that they would... Uh, have strength and courage during the suffering and understand the suffering has meaning and purpose and uh, and just in the midst of suffering live your life uh, live your life as well as you can in the kingdom and and then he continues on so we're going to just go to chapter 4 verse 1 therefore because of all the stuff coming before since Christ suffered in his body arm yourselves also with the same attitude because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin Whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. What does that mean? Um, I, 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 obviously, we are not we are not free from sin. All of a, whoever says they have no sin deceives themselves, and the truth is not in him. So um, we all all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We all sin, but we're free from sin. Uh, we're done with sin. Sin no longer has control over our lives. We're done with it. Yes, we're going to sin. Yes, there'll be impacts from sin, both in the in the left-hand kingdom, but in the right-hand kingdom, the kingdom of God, the vertical, the up-and-down relationship with God, we are no longer... Um, we are no longer in a penalty for sin. Sin no longer has control over us. God's not going to kick us out of the kingdom because of our, our sins. Uh, we are justified. We are, sang- we, we are in the kingdom of God because of Jesus. Because he suffered uh, in his body, then he freed us from sin. And if we suffer in the body, now what does that mean to suffer in the body? It means that... Um, when you live your life, when at some level, let me put it this way, at some level, living your life for God uh, is is suffering because you're going to have, uh, it's a denying of yourself, the needs of the body. That's one form of suffering. And it's also being persecuted by people around you who don't understand why in the world you'd be doing the things that you're doing. Like, let's say fasting, denying yourself food, Right. Most people would say, why in the world would you deny yourself food? That's the dumbest thing ever. And as a matter of fact, the world today would say, don't deny yourself food because you need to have a constant blood sugar. So you have to eat five, you know, three meals a day with two snacks and no suffering allowed in the world today. And if you're suffering for any reason at all, it's your own, you shouldn't be doing it and you're dumb and stupid and all that sort of thing. But it is okay to suffer for God. <laughs> it's okay to deny yourself uh, earthly pleasures, um, and do that for the sake of God. There's no, nothing, as a matter of fact, uh, we should do that. And that is kind of an outward uh, indication or an outward symbol that you are, that you're trying to live your life for God because you are denying yourself things that the body naturally wants. So when you deny yourself things that the body naturally wants, that is an outward appearance or an outward demonstration of your love for God. And so you're suffering for God and it shows that you're free with sin Um, and that God lives in you and he's redeemed you and all the great things that he does. So live your life for God. It's okay to suffer. It's okay to suffer. I mean, that's the whole point of this, right? There's suffering. Well, it's okay. Suffering is okay. We'll go on. Verse 2. As a result, they do not live the rest of their earthly lives for human, evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. So from now on, you don't follow your human desires. You live for the will of God. And the will of God, that's the what we pray every time we pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is heaven. I'm going to align my will with your will. I'm going to seek out your will through word and scripture, um, through worship, through, um, through meditation on that scripture. And then I'm going to seek out your will. I'm going to seek out your will. And then I'm going to live according to your will. I'm going to align my will with your will. Um, Verse 3, for you have spent enough time in the past doing what pagans choose to do, living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. 
And this, I just, every time you read something like this in the Old Testament, you think, no, they couldn't have possibly had these things, right? Um, but they did. It's the natural human condition. It's the natural human desire to live in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and detestable idolatry. These are things, first of all, these are things that if you spend too much time, you can become addicted to them and to destroy you. So that's first of all. But this is the natural human condition. Debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable, idolatry. This, this is what, if you are left to yourself without any boundaries whatsoever, uh, and these things are available to you, um, you, you will naturally have a tendency to want to be addicted to them, to follow them, uh, and, and they can destroy you. And, and, and in history have destroyed many, 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 many people. I look at the world today and I look at all the junk and garbage going around and the problem with we we live today almost like the Greek society of the time of Peter. And what I mean by that is in the Greek society it was perfectly acceptable to live in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing and detestable idolatry. That was all okay. There was nothing wrong with it. As a matter of fact, if you didn't do these things, they looked at you kind of strange. Um, they, they said, why in the world wouldn't you, why are you denying yourself all these earthly pleasures? Um, they even had a god, right? Uh, Bacchus. Uh, was it Bacchus? Um, they, had, they had gods of drunkenness and orgies and all that sort of thing. And so you would... You would have parties in celebration of these uh, bacchanalia parties, right? You would. Th this is what you would do. And if you didn't do that, people looked at you like you were crazy. Um, and in the society, uh, there were, particularly in this area where Peter's writing the letter, they had people um, that were done with it. They realized that this was not a godly way to live. They may not have known all the things about Jesus or the Old Testament gods, but they did at some level realize that this way of life, just pleasing yourself, does not, does not, produce, um, it does not produce inner joy. It doesn't produce inner peace. Uh, it doesn't produce the things that people search for outside of this. Um, and so that's why when Judaism came up into this area. They couldn't be fully Jewish because they didn't have the Jewish line. They weren't circumcised. But that there were a lot of people, they called them God-fearers, who kind of followed the Jewish laws as well as they could. Uh, and they were perfectly fine with a Jewish society. And they were willing to uh, live in that condition because they found more peace. Uh, they found more joy. They found inner uh, you know, inner calmness, inner peace from living outside of the way the culture around them lived, which was debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable idolatry, and more, right? And I look at the United States today, and we are, we are, we are very eerily similar to this, right? Um, th there are people that say, well, I was, but they say, I was born this way. I was born to live in drunkenness and orgies and carousing. I mean, you can't deny me that I was born. Of course you were born this way. Everybody's born this way. <laughs> the, the deal is you have, to, um, you have to deny yourself of these things if you want the higher things of God. And, um, and when the society around you says, well, you should just, if this is the way you were born, this is the way you should live, they're denying the fact that, that, that it does not necessarily produce in you uh, the character uh, of who God wants you to be. That, that's for sure. And um, and I'm and I am so I, I don't think it'll probably it will probably happen in my lifetime where uh, where living in debauchery, lust, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, detestable idolatry, fentanyl, or whatever drug comes our way, that all these things that it's perfectly acceptable to live this way. Uh, and you should live this way. Uh, and if you don't live this way, you're not really, you know, part of society. 
This is probably on the horizon of our world, right? But don't, don't follow it. Don't be deceived by it. You are a child of God. And as a child of God, he's called you to something higher. He's called you to live your life without these things so that your life can have uh, meaning and purpose, so that your life can suffer, that suffering's okay, and that through that suffering you grow in your character, and then because of that you can use your life in service of God and service to other people and service to mankind. And the world's going to say you're crazy, but that's okay because you're a child of God. And as a child of God, you will find deeper meaning and purpose in your life than the people that follow this will ever find. And, and you should actually, at some level, feel sorry for them. Uh, I mean, and at some level, I do. I mean, when I, when I think of a class of people that live this way, uh, it is what I call the second generational institutional wealth. People who live, uh, you know, they, in very, very wealthy families, or they live in Hollywood and their parents are actors or in the film industry or something like that. And they haven't really done anything themselves except, um, you know, live on the, with their parents providing for their every need. And their parents don't want them to suffer. And so their parents give them everything that they want in life. And they end up, you know, living with cocaine and, and orgies and drunkenness and all the things that they have. And they don't live a life fulfilled. And, um, and their parents think that they're giving them a great life because they don't put any boundaries or structures around their life, and they're not. I mean, basically, you have to suffer in life. I mean, <laughs> you cannot live your life without suffering. If, uh, and, and I look at these, these uh, children, and every once in a while they'll pop up in the news of a child that just, um, you know, just they're, they're suing their parents because they're not getting enough money and... Uh, to, you know, not tuition, uh, stipend, you know, the um, whatever they get, you know, money from their parents. And, and it's not enough because they can't get enough cocaine or they can't get enough sex or whatever. Um, and I, feel, I just feel sorry for these people. They're not living the human life. It may, they, may, they may appear as they walk down Hollywood Boulevard and look at all the Saks Fifth Avenue shops or, you know, whatever, uh, uh, the Gucci shops and they can go in and they can get a hundred thousand dollar Gucci purse and they think that they're you know living the dream and they're not it, it makes me sad it truly does make me sad uh, that they'll never get to experience um, true humanity I guess and and at some level that you know that if they continue down this road they will they'll just live a vacuous life at all. And that's, that's just the way I feel about it. Verse five, but they will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Yes, someday they will. For this is the reason the gospel was preached even to those who are now dead, so that they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body, but live according to God in regard to the spirit. So, um, Everyone has to give an account to God. Um, if you made it all about yourself, at some point we're all, right, we all have to give an account to God who is going to judge the living and the dead. Um, there will someday be a judgment. We'll all rise from the dead and be judged. And um, you'll either be judged righteous or unrighteous. And uh, the righteous judgment, you know, the older I get, the wonder I more I wonder about this. Um, uh, I, I don't know if judging, this is just, this is speculation. Remember, God doesn't talk a lot about what death is going to look like. It's more speculation, but, but to know that you suffered on this earth and then to wear that as a badge of honor in heaven. To say I went through some really severe suffering, but I, but God and I were still holding on to each other. Um, I, I think you, I think that you, you have um, not so much anymore. But you used to hear stories of people that were poor. And the mother and the father would do everything they could. They'd work two or three jobs 
to put food on the table, but then to save enough money so that their kid could go to college, so that their kid would have a better life. And you used to hear story. We don't have stories like that anymore because the government wants to reduce suffering at all. Suffering's bad, according to the government, right? But but we used to have stories like this. And, and, and you'd have these people that would end up becoming professionals, lawyers or, you know, I don't know what they would have, teachers. And they would, they would honor their parents to say, my parents suffered a lot so that I could get this opportunity in my life. And I am so grateful to them. And those parents would wear that as a badge of honor, that their suffering had meaning. And the meaning of their suffering was to give their children an opportunity in life. And that suffering, that badge of honor, goes with them to the grave to be to be deeply loved and appreciated for the suffering. Well, when we suffer for God at some level, th- there will be future people. We may not know all the connections, but there... In God's plan, there are people that that um, that were benefited from from God's plan, right? That that they that humanity was able to move forward uh, because of suffering. That that we were part of a, a grander plan. That our suffering had meaning and purpose. That's that's what I believe we find out in heaven. And I, and, I th- and I think that we wear that as a badge of honor. And if you get to heaven and you didn't suffer at all, if it was all about you, I honestly think that you'll look around you and say, why did I make it all about me? Because <laughs> that has no meaning or purpose, right? I mean, I honestly think that in and, uh, in and of itself would make me very, very sad. And, and maybe at some level that's part of hell is realizing that you didn't look out for anybody else you made it all about you and how um how you have to live with that for eternity i don't know that's the, those are big deep philosophical questions um yeah so I, i'm not ex- for this is the reason the gospel is preached even to those who are now dead so the people that are now dead the gospel was preached to them and they might be judged according to human standards in regard to the body but live according to God in regard to the spirit. Um, there are there are two kingdoms, like there's a God kingdom and there's an earthly kingdom. And we will be, you know, you're judged differently. In the earthly kingdom, it's a different judgment. Like right now in the earthly kingdom, I'm kind of on the outside. I don't do the things that, that the people, like I don't watch commercials. I don't watch a lot of, you know, now there's, but we have definitely denied Jennifer and I denied ourselves, you know, some of the things that other people do just because we don't think it's, you know, beneficial to us anymore. And the world thinks we're crazy. I'll, I'll give you an example of this. The number one show a uh, couple years ago, I think it ended a couple years ago, was Game of Thrones. And Jennifer and I turned it on. And we said, this has no redeeming value. I mean, I know... You, some of you may all have watched Game of Thrones, but we watched like the first two or three episodes. There's just too much for us. So we turned it off. And the world thinks we're crazy. And whenever I tell anybody, you have never seen the Game of Thrones, they like, it, but it was the best show ever. I understand that. And I'm okay with you watching it. That's not a problem. But for me, I didn't find it edifying. So I stopped watching it. And, I, and so that at some level makes, you know, people look at me like I'm kind of strange. And... I have a hard time, like I can't use in a sermon illustration anything from Game of Thrones because uh, I don't know anything about it. Of course, I wouldn't anyway because I would have people in the audience who are like, oh, you're you're promoting Game of Thrones. It's like, no, I'm using it as a sermon illustration. Well, I don't do that. Um, I don't have, at some point, I deny myself a connection with the culture around me because I simply haven't watched that show and uh, don't, have no desire to watch it. And And, and there are people... Uh, who think that I'm kind of, you know, a little bit weird because I don't do that. But that's part of who I am. Um, and uh, there's an earthly judgment and there's a and there's a heavenly judgment. And I'm more concerned about the heavenly judgment than I am about the earthly judgment. I'm trying to live my life according to God's standard and not live my life according to the human standard. And the more debaucherous and lustful and drunken and orgiest, carousing, detestable our society becomes, the more I'm going to align myself with God and less I am with society. And there are going to be 
they're going to think I'm weird. They're going to think I'm Amish, <laughs> uh, which is okay. <laughs> That's okay. All right. I think we'll end it there. Uh, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Uh, gracious God, give us all the strength to live our lives according to you and not according to the world. And help us to see that suffering is okay when it suffers for you. Be with us through that suffering and until we meet again, in Jesus' name, amen.